So we're back looking at some bad designs where I'm gonna take them and critique them and hopefully break them down so far that you understand what went wrong and you can apply it to your own designs and learn some fundamentals along the way. This is Graphic Designer Reviews Your Bad Designs episode two. You know how to make your designs less bad? Everything pack? Yep. Where you get all my products that I've ever created ever. So all 26 products, over $300 worth of value for literally just one purchase, which is kind of insane. The cool part is you get all my future self buy products for free as well, no matter the price email to you. Or if you're part of my Discord, we have over thousand, like what? Close to 2000. Incredibly active members who can just really much, just, it's a really fun time over there. So if you're interested, absolutely check it out. It's always the first thing in the description. And uh, yeah, if you haven't got it yet, Get good, kid. All right, guys, so for the first product, we have somebody by the name of Cal. Now, on Discord, Cal actually had mentioned that they were going for something that's simplistic, or in other words, for many designers, clean, right? Oh, it's not the best descriptive word, by the way, just saying. Taking a look at this, I can see a lot of beginners sort of mistakes in here. Now, although objectively it's not a bad design and I absolutely see what they were going for, the moment you wanna introduce something that's simplistic, which kind of means in a way easy to consume, you the moment you add too many textures though, it becomes problematic. So in this case here, we actually have six different types. Number one would actually be the typography of it. So the typography, the iconography can be considered texture because of course it is placed usually sometimes willy nilly or just added for again, texture elements that why I use the word willy nilly. Life is odd right now. Anyway, number two would be the obvious noise that's actually on the graphic itself, like the overall hue of it. And then the background element itself, although there's only one type of blue in there, there's actually a two tone blue, which means there's some kind of asset back there as well. So that's number three. Number four is actually this random asset here. Got no real idea why it's there. But number five would actually be the overall sort of like this cascading line idea. And then number six would then be the background, the gradient that's on there as well. So although all these different things were here in place with like a design objective to be like, hey, I want this to look super cool and let me put my effort into it. Too many of these things end up coming off as noisy or another way, messy and not the football player. So actually just taking some of these and just minimizing them to maybe even two or three maximum will instantly help bring this graphic to be a little bit more clean or in other words, simplistic or just easy to digest. <clears throat> digest. English is hard. However, though, there's also one elephant in the room in this design. It's actually the white space. Now, white space basically means the overall object the space actually has, and if it is actually enough for the design to feel, once again, correct, I guess is the word. So just taking a look at these overall assets over here, if I were to just shrink these guys, kind of, of course, I might have to split them up as well, right? Put this one over here, put this one over here. We can immediately get a better feeling of, hey, this actually looks like it's, it feels like it belongs in the situation. Whereas to this, it just feels like it was placed and it's really, really tight to the corner where you just kind of feel just squeezed. And of course, even this logo up here, there's a lot of different places where you can place this logo. And some of these objects down here just tend up to be a little bit too big. Once you see these things once, once you see typography, texture, iconography once, you don't really need to see it again. So it can actually be a lot more smaller than you guys think. Now, with that being said though, this is my actual overall design approach that I chose to do and pretty much did nothing else to this design besides remove some textures and that's really it. And of course the whole white space movement and kind of moving these iconographies though, but just this alone, right? Can bring your actual design from looking a little bit too messy, a little too noisy, a little too novice beginner-ish, and then moving into the realm of understanding what actually makes a design look and approach look clean. So although there's not texture being placed in this overall graphic, literally more than just the actual gradient on the bottom and the other silhouette of a logo behind it, just the additional type texture of these things around the corner gives the overall project of the design an objective and just looks really cool. But also the tastefulness of the overall colors on the graphic being a little more vibrant and just out there, it just makes it full and more fuller of a design. So if there's anything I would like for you guys to take from this point A to point B and what we actually end up doing was sometimes most most times, less is more. Because for one, the lesser we do, the easier it is to manage. And also, too much of your favorite things of like textures, gradients, etc., can just add too much noise to a project and make it overall just look like there was no actual objective focus on what your mission was. All right, so the next review we actually have is by a person named Impact. Now, first off, I just want to say before you guys go, what the heck, this is actually pretty good design. It definitely and absolutely is a really good composition and honestly, really well designed. 
However, though, one thing I actually immediately see and kind of how I can say this person might be a little bit of a beginner still is the fact that they actually wanted to say to themselves, I'm going to use blue for this tone, for this background or for this project. And they use it on literally everything. So if we were to just take a quick look, right, we have this really cool blue smoky background. We got these sort of like two left and right objects on the overall design itself. We, of course, got this really pretty blue helmet with this nice cool, you know, uh, Red Bull kind of logo kind of sticking out. And then we even got some blue lights and blue smoke. I mean, it's just basically a lot of blue. Contrast is a very, very big key element of design fundamentals, and that's where this actually lacks. There is honestly not a deep understanding of what the foreground and background elements may be or where they kind of want to be sat in the overall graphic. Now, if this is you, right, let's say you just made a design, you look at it, you basically say to yourself, this is basic, this is, it's just red, right? Let's just say for that, for instance. As a matter of fact, this is actually another project by the designer known as Lie By, who kind of struggles with the same exact thing. You see how red this is, and it's basically just red. Contrast and the fundamentals of it is so important. That's how I can kind of pick out and depict if you actually understand the fundamentals fully yet. The easiest way to solve for contrast is actually to look at the photo itself. We have this really pretty baby blue for the overall helmet and even like the suit that's on. And we have this really cool Red Bull logo with this orange and red tones. There's so much that you can play with that can actually implement another design fundamental of unity. The idea that if you look around a design, you can see other colors being implemented and played with each other. It feels a lot more stronger. So what I ended up noticing was behind the actual person was this cool smoke kind of texture, but also we had this W that acted almost as for me an immediate kind of shape. Now, the intention of doing something in design is so, so important. So as I'm in his actual final PSD, we can see the intention of what this shape was doing for him. He no longer wanted it to be a logo or an iconography. He was looking for it to be a shape. But upon closer inspection, we see there's a lot of space going on out here, not a lot of space going over there. So there's a lot of balance that's also missing as well. So what I wanted to make sure I did on my concept is I took that idea and made it intentional. I gave it an actual shape on the left and right hand side that are very much so even, but also a little more aggressive to fit the overall theme and the idea of excitement with racing. And then cool enough that of course this Red Bull logo, this orange and red tone, I just made the overall shapes orange as well. And that helps with our unity aspect. Then of course, complement that with the overall baby blue background that I took from the actual helmet. And of course, kept his old smoke idea. It just made everything pop and come into the foreground and actually give us a distinctive foreground and a background. So if we were to actually hop into the last layer of his overall product, we can see he wanted to add that blue. And what he ended up doing, which is basically, you can kind of see he combined all the layers together, was he had a whole bunch of these adjustment layers. No. So to replicate something like this is honestly not hard whatsoever. On my project alone, on my camera raw filter, you can see if I turn it on and off, I added the same blue hue. But honestly, I think mine looks a little bit more toned or even easier to actually adjust and actually look at because it's just really easy. Let me show you, because it's actually really cool. So heading over to filter, camera raw filter. Of course, once this opens up, we can click this little box down here to look at the before and after so we can see the original and our new color corrected. And so I'm gonna just kind of put a little color correction on. Never forget the little bit of sharpening. So already, of course, I just made my colors a little bit more vibrant. But with that, though, under color grading is where you can actually take some of these different ideas and add some different color, uh, color hues to your project. So in this case here, the midtones, we want to make it more blue. So I'm going to take this middle circle here, click on it once, move it towards the blue and just let go. And immediately you can see what's happening when I, of course, move it to blue. If I want to turn it on and off, I can show you. Look at that, right? The overall face, his face, all of it basically turns and gets this little hue over everything. Now, all the way, of course, let it go. I just basically can click again, move it towards the center to get rid of more blue, or of course, move it towards the outskirts. So of course, increase the amount of blue, or even just take the actual blue itself, a little node here, kind of move it around the color wheel, even try out different color schemes. And realistically, the midtones is one of my favorite ones to mess around with. So if you're just new to this, you're welcome, because it's really, it's really fun. But you can also even change your shadows and such, right? So if I click on it, move it around the shadows, so around where the actual track is, or even in between the overall tires, right? I can take this, maybe make it a little bit more lower, right? But I can, of course, get a blue hue there as well. And just for like the, the funness of it, I can even make the highlights a little bit more green and give myself this like really odd aqua CC that's not great, but just want to showcase what is actually possible. So yeah, if you're still using adjustments, like I said, no, please, please, let me save you. Anyway, though, if I just had to kind of summarize what this overall project was missing, it would be unity, 
balance, and contrast. With just those three simple little tweaks, all those simple in retrospect, these are all fundamentals that all you guys should understand. So hopefully you got to learn a bit what, you know, in real time, what it actually might be. And just because I don't want to leave lie by hanging this whole red thing, watch this. Oh my God, that's a lot of texture. Lie by, you paid attention, right? And just like that, we have lie by's new product. And funny enough, I really just didn't change much. All I ended up doing was actually sizing the overall characters up a little bit, giving it just kind of a little bit more of a cascading line to make it just a little bit more interesting. And then of course, a little bit of type treatments, but overall I wanted to focus on the color portion. So besides just using only red, I of course implemented some different shades or tones of whites, blacks, and grays. And honestly, just that is quite literally enough. Because technically, you know, you can have red in your like overall guidelines, but black, white, and grays are pretty much universal to all brands. So go revisit your design. Is it too much red? If it is, you might actually have to take away where that red actually lies. And sometimes it also lies in gradients. So one, do not be afraid to actually use the overall real tones of real colors, please. You don't have to put a gradient over everything. Two, white is universal to all brands ever in existence. And three, lie by you specifically. If I have to fix things going into straight line ever again, no. So with that, that is the end of the video here today. So hopefully you guys learned something. I feel like I broke down a lot of different fundamentals that maybe weren't visible to you till today's video, which it is W if it was already W. And if you're just watching because you love me, W. But hey, with that being said, Sesso HQ out. We're gonna get a key smile and stay positive and stay freaking productive, guys. Now, don't forget, I also break down this stuff all the time in my newsletter. Go check it out. It's like the third link in the description. And of course, the first link in the description, the everything pack. And never forget that either. So that's all I got. I love you. Peace.